Thank you. Bishop Davies, you have laid out the enormous challenge and the urgent call very compellingly. So I will only build on your words. I speak here as a Canadian church leader and on behalf of a great, great number of faithful people in Canada. I speak on behalf of a Canadian interfaith call for leadership and action on climate change. This call is a call to spiritual and moral integrity. It's a call that has been signed on to by 60 faith communities in Canada, representing well over half of Canadians. It has been difficult, as you can imagine, to be a Canadian here at these talks. I have just heard Bishop Davies speak of the US position as tragic and I would say that the Canadian position is tragic as well and is, as you know, very much aligned with the U.S. position. On this issue, science is not enough. I and other church leaders met yesterday with our own Canadian Minister of the Environment. What was reassuring about the meeting was that it is clear to me that he understands the science. He says we are watching a tragedy a disaster, actually, I believe. He said, a disaster in the making. We are watching a disaster in the making. So he does understand the science. But on this issue, science is not enough. The logic of science has not moved us to where we need to be. We need something more, and that is why ecological issues are also fundamentally moral, ethical, and theological concerns, and it's why we must, as faith leaders and people of faith, take res our responsibilities seriously in grappling with them. And Canadians are grappling with them, and I am sure that following these COPs will be pushed even more deeply into this matter of heart and soul um, so that we might live with integrity because when our actions threaten the lives of millions of people, that is wrong, not only people but all other creatures. When our economic systems jeopardize the well-being of future generations, that is wrong and we have heard a call for action from our young people here, very compellingly put. When the lifestyles of the wealthy undermine the survival of the poor, that is wrong. We know that we must rise to this challenge. We are capable as people of doing what is right. We know in our hearts and souls and as a result of the good words of our faith traditions, we know what is right. And so now we are called to step up and act accordingly to what is right. I'll be happy to take uh, questions, but I think I'll leave it at there. Thank you. Thank you, Margie.